viewers and welcome to my channel. So this is a brand new series. So it's in a playlist and everything. And uh, this one is party brewing. Now I noticed a general lack of uh, well, basically anything related to a party. Everything is always beer, wine or cider. Nothing else. Um, no one really does anything else. So that's, uh, I'm going to change that. I'm going to become the first to brew a party. So let's get started. So for any party, you're going to have a backbone of like the main drinks, which are usually spirits. But if you're not going to go out and buy the spirits to make the punch and the shots and everything, well, if you're here and you're going to watch this. I'm going to force you. So what we're using is a very simple sugar wine or sugar must if you want to be all arty farty about it. But I'm taking that you just don't know anything and it's your first time, so I'll be gentle. Probably. So I have made this in a past video. Um, actually, one of the first videos I did, I made a sugar wine. Um, funny enough, I made a sugar wine and this is the results that you can do with a bit of freeze distillation or freeze refraction. Somewhere. Anyway, so um, let's get into this. So I've got myself a kilo of sugar, a five liter water container that is sealed. I also have myself some yeast nutrients. I got mine from Amazon for 100 grams. So I'll put the link down there in case you can't find it. And I also have some express wine yeast compound that I got from Wilkinson's. Um, again, universal wine yeast works fine. Any type of wine yeast. So you can't use bread yeast. I have a whole series on brewing with bread yeast, which uh, I'll put a playlist link up there. So if you're interested in just using bread yeast, you can, but you won't be making this. Not yet. The experiment is still going. So um, step one in this, because I'm presuming you don't have a hydrometer because you've just stumbled across this video. I have marked with a mark pen just there where the five liter mark is. That way, if you copy this, you will end up making the same thing, regardless if you have a hydrometer or not. And uh, yeah, so let's get into this. So because sugar displaces water very slightly, we're going to have to take out a very slight amount, like so. So here's my uh, glass, which is massively oversized. So in this goes a little glug. And I've also got my kettle because it's easier to dissolve sugar in hot water. So in goes, I don't know, a litre and a half. There we go, stick the lid back on to keep it as sterile as possible since we've now cracked the seal. So I can drink some water. I'm going to boil my kettle. So my kettle is just boiled and I've got myself clean but not necessarily sterilised utensils. This just happens to be a rather large jug. But it's okay because the boiling water will sterilize it. Now you can use a funnel but you don't have to if you're using a jug. It's just handy to have. Again you can rinse it with boiling water. So we're just going to dump in our kilo. Lovely lovely. Throw that away. Now just add your litre and a half of boiling water. Now stir it until all the sugar has dissolved. Now the more water you boil, the quicker it's going to dissolve. That's why a litre and a half is about right. So our sugar is now clear. You can see straight through to the bottom of it, which is lovely. So just to make it easier, I'm going to take this off because we don't need this. And because we've already got basically half of this filled with cold water, we can add this directly into here. So either use your jug or use your funnel. I'm going to use a funnel. Now you can always take out a bit of extra water because, well, once we've added the sugar, you don't want to pour away your tasty sugar. That affects your alcohol level. Take our nice hot water and add it to the cold water and it will even itself out. So in it goes. You don't need to use a funnel, but I do. And 
there we go. So this will roughly displace half a litre-ish of uh, our lovely sugar wash, just so you know. So I've dumped a hydrometer in just to see what the potential alcohol is, and it says here 11.5%. That's because I had to dump out very, very slight amount of the sugar wash. My bad. It happens. So now we've got to add in our yeast nutrient to make sure that this ferments to dryness. So again, nice and clean, use some boiling water, and don't be shy with it. You want to add in two teaspoons of our yeast nutrient. This is to ensure it ferments properly. Then we're going to add in a healthy teaspoon of our express wine yeast compound or universal wine yeast and it goes like so. And just to make sure it's all mixed up, give it a shake. Like so. So what you want to do with this is this lid is on tight. Now you want to loosen the lid and just give it a little quarter turn. So it's on there, as you can see, you can pull it off. But basically it will lay down flat on there and as the yeast ferments away and produces gas, this will bob up and down just like an airlock, but without having to buy an airlock, which is pretty cool. And there we have it. That is how simple it is to create a simple sugar wash. Now I've got a second one which I've had on for a few days. It is bubbling away looking all lovely like so. And this is 12%, this is 11.5%, which was my bad. I did have to remove a little bit of the, uh, of the liquid math farts in the brain. So um, yeah, but basically you can expect this to ferment to dryness in about four weeks. Now you will know when it's done because this will turn back to a clear liquid, which is novel. It is very handy. You don't need to add finings into it. And then we're going to pick up and we're going to start making some lovely tasty things with this. So I hope you join me for that. So don't forget to comment, rate, like, share and subscribe. Of course, check out some of my other videos. And uh, I'll see you for the next Party Brewing video. See you later.